So today I want to go into plot a bit more. I want to go into how to build a plot structure for a mystery story. Hi guys, welcome back. So today we're doing the plot hole analysis thing. So basically the idea is that after last time, I am now left with this new structure of both the plot points that I had and also the questions that are driving each part of the story. The next thing that I want to do is to basically go through this entire outline as I have it so far and figure out what are all the plot holes, what doesn't make sense and try to clean it up so that it is a logical structure that makes sense and that isn't easy to take apart. So this is what I did after last time. So I separated the story into six parts and each of those parts has its own driving question that gets answered in that part and then asks a new question and then the next part again with this new driving question and so on. Within each part there are sub questions that also get asked. Some of them get answered within that part, others get answered later on. Within each of the parts I put the plot points as I have them so far and again this is the bare bones of the mystery structure, all the relevant plot points. So in here should only be the plot points that drive the story forward and reveal the plot and all character growth moments or character interaction moments, they will be more fleshed out in the scenes as we do the outlining next time. So the first thing that I want to test for is how active is Alex in this story. So what you're looking for here is if you have a story where your protagonist just happens to be there but doesn't really affect the plot, that is something that becomes very clear, especially towards the end of the story, especially in mystery stories, and it's very annoying and unsatisfying for a reader, right? So I really want to have Alex be a character that matters in the story and makes a change to how events play out. What effect does Alex have on this story? So if Alex wasn't in this story, what would happen? The difference is that he's the key person who figures out the link between other cases, the link between the water source, what happens in the neighboring country and how is that related to what is happening in his country and then the source of the outbreak as well as this link to this drifter character and what secrets are hidden there. So Alex, I would say, does drive the plot very much because he's very much the person who figures out all these kinds of things. So he's also the person who, again, made this maybe unprofessional connection with the relatives, but this connection is also what leads to him being able to get into the neighboring country to investigate further there, even without the support of his own police department and government or whatever. This is all driven by Alex. So yeah, in that sense, I'm happy with the plot as it is because I think Alex is sufficiently active and does drive the plot forward, even though there are a lot of events that obviously happen to him and he has to be reactive to them, but he does at least solve the mystery and that's him doing it, right? Okay, so and then the second test that you would want to do is to figure out what is the crucible that keeps your protagonist in the conflict. So this is basically the question of why doesn't the protagonist avoid the conflict, right? Why don't they just go away? Why don't they just not talk to this person anymore who antagonizes them? All these kinds of things, right? There has to be something that makes it impossible for them to run away and that forces them to face whatever conflict they're in. So for Alex, the crucible basically starts out as this job situation of him being in this job that he's gotten through his family and there's a lot of family expectations. So his entire social standing is basically linked to his job and now it is linked to this case that he's been assigned to that he needs to solve, especially as the missing people cases increase and it becomes more and more of a public case. There's a lot of pressure on him to solve this case and basically do right by his family and so on. So that's what keeps him in the story and engaged in that way in the beginning part. So that's until 
basically he's fired in part four, right? And then from there, the question is, why doesn't he just stop investigating from there? Because he's lost everything. He hated this job to begin with, and he's now also been disowned by his own family, right? And the answer here basically is that part of it would be that he's lost everything. And the only way he can see for himself to basically be accepted by his family again and have a sort of future in this society that he lives in is to solve this case and prove himself to be right and prove that it is the neighboring country you know all of these kinds of things you know those plot beats they're very familiar right so that's one aspect to it the other aspect to it should be the character arc where basically at this point he's come to care enough about the relatives and the missing people themselves that he's very much invested in wanting to find out what happened to them and stopping it from happening even more because there's also this thing of this cryptic message that basically announces that there will be a lot more missing people cases and that it is going to get worse right so there is this sense of him knowing something with the contaminated water and the neighboring country that he needs to use it to stop whatever is going on because at this point he obviously doesn't believe that his government will do that they are just trying to cover up if they know something that's his belief at least so that's basically why he feels very much like he needs to stop this before it's getting worse. So those are the crucibles in the last two parts of the story. Especially since in the final stage is he's so deep in this, once he crosses over into the other country and learns more about what is going on, and then in the final part when he comes across this alien parasite creature, that's basically where there's no escape anymore, right? So you want to have a crucible that forces your character to stick around long enough so that they are so deep in the conflict that they wouldn't get out of it even if they wanted to run away at this stage right so then the third test is really the logical sequence of your events and explaining away convenient coincidences right so i have one convenient coincidence which is basically how does alex manage to get into the neighboring country after he's been fired and publicly fired too right and this country has been to some degree notoriously shutting itself off. There is really antagonistic relationship between both countries. So it wouldn't be easy for a citizen of Alex's country to get into the neighboring country, especially in this situation. So how does this happen, right? And my conclusion so far is that I also need to explain why the relatives are in the final part. And the reason why I want to have the relatives in the final part is twofold. So first of all, it's so that there are a few more people in the final conflict, so that there is more stakes and more potential for people getting infected and turning. And the second thing is that one of these characters needs to be in the final part, which is this drifter posing as a relative. And I don't just want to have like one relative, this drifter character being basically there in the final part. It would be better if this person would be among other relatives, just kind of like to hide them in plain sight a bit better. And so I'm trying to basically make this problem a feature in the story. So having this whole thing of why would the relatives be there? That doesn't make sense, right? Why are they so involved? Why are they investigating themselves? Why does Alex listen to this relative who gives him a tip off in terms of the investigation? So all these kinds of questions, I want to make them a feature. And the idea was basically because Alex has this inappropriately close relationship with those relatives now, because they feel free to come to him and basically ask for information as to how the investigation is going and because he's not good at shutting them out and all those kinds of things. Because of that, he's aware that these relatives have like a sort of almost group formed where they are trying to investigate themselves because they feel that nobody else is doing anything. And that's where he comes back into contact with them after he's been fired because he was in contact with them, right? And reveals maybe as a justification that he hasn't been doing nothing like this public firing suggested, but rather explaining to them that he found out things about the water and the neighboring country, kind of like, and that it's been covered up. Just kind of like this justification thing would make sense, right? Because if you had like a lot of angry 
relatives who are relying on you to find their loved ones and you fail so spectacularly, you would want to justify that you have found something, right? And try to help them in that way. And that's also how these people could basically be useful for Alex to then make it into the neighboring country. So my idea is that even though those two neighboring countries obviously have like an antagonistic relationship between each other, it doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of people, especially in the border area, that have family in the other country and so on, right? And there needs to be a way for those people to interact with each other and also for families to meet each other and so on. So there would be a strong border control, but it should be possible for one person from one country to get into the other country through family invitation, for example, and kind of like posing as a sort of family gathering or whatever. So that's kind of my idea here for how to deal with all these potential plot holes would be that this connection Alex has with those relatives actually comes in handy when it comes to him getting into the neighboring country. Okay, so now the final thing that I want to do in this plot series is basically to take what I've got so far. So this is my outline as I have it right now. And now what I want to do is to shape this into a specific outline form that you can use as a blueprint for then writing your story.